Hello everyone and welcome to another homebrew update. I'm your host Troy and I hope everyone had a great week this week. We don't have too much to talk about in this video, but before I do actually get started, I do just want to say thank you for all the wonderful comments that you left on the last video. There was so much discussing and things like that in the last video and I just love to see that and I hope that happens in this video again. Anyway guys, let's go ahead and get started with this small homebrew update. The very first thing we'll talk about is going to be the Team Executor OS that was released just a couple weeks ago or maybe a month ago now. As you may know, developers have actually reverse engineered the coding and the operating system on how it actually works with the device and in the middle of the code they found that there is brick code. That brick code essentially makes it so that if we actually mess with the Team Executor official code, I guess you could say, official code, uh, then the brick code will actually turn on on the switch and your switch will be bricked. There's no way around to actually get it past it. Well, there is a way around to get past it by entering a password that I can't remember at the moment, but the fact that there was this code in there made a huge frenzy on the internet in the homebrew scene and it was not good. If you think back on the 3DS, there was also a brick code in the Gateway 3DS flash cart, which randomly activated. People didn't know why it activated all the times, and it literally, it bricked your system, and the only way to actually restore is if you had a Nant dump to revert back onto your system. Well, this one here did not actually randomly activate, but it still did have the high possibility of doing so, but most people did not see it even happen to their system so meaning a lot of people didn't get bricked a few people did but not very many still though due to this team executor did release a patch for their os pretty much putting a band-aid on the brick code the brick code is still there but they made it so if it actually does activate it it literally does nothing and it still boots into to the normal switch os I myself am not very happy that the brick code is still there. I say that they should have completely removed it from the get-go anyway. There's no need for any type of brick code in any type of code. It's stupid. It's why I am waiting for the Atmosphere custom framework to come out because I don't want to deal with this crap. Anyway, enough about the brick code and team executor stupid decisions. Let's move on to more of emulators on the Switch. Yes, if you didn't think we had enough emulators on the Switch, there is a team developing the Dolphin emulator for the Nintendo Switch. Now, if you don't know what the Dolphin emulator is, it is not an emulator to have little dolphins going around your screen echolocating different things. No, the Dolphin emulator is a GameCube emulator, so you'll be able to play your GameCube games on the go which is pretty awesome. Now this emulator is still in the very early stages, so I don't think it actually does run any games yet, but the fact that it is being worked on is still amazing. Next up, we're gonna talk about the PlayStation Vita, and as you expected, the H Encore exploit has been released. For any people who have a PlayStation TV or a PlayStation Vita on firmware 3.65 to 3.68, you are now able to fully hack your device. This is amazing news. Now, just like I said on the last video, if you do have a 3.60, you do want to play newer games, you can, but only update to 3.65 or 3.67. Do not update to 3.68 unless it is a last resort for you. The reason is because 3.68 doesn't have the code boot exploit to actually boot into the custom firmware automatically on boot up, whereas 3.65 and 3.67 do. You can take a look at all the links in the description below. There is a tutorial on how to actually install it straight from the Flow's GitHub, as well as the places to download it and more about the actual firmware itself and all that. Along with H Encore being out, for those of you who do want to be on 3.65 firmware and if you are on 3.60 just to play the games, well, the Flow also has you covered. He released a app called Firmware Updater. It literally does exactly that. It updates your firmware from one firmware to another and whichever you choose. Essentially, you just download whatever PUT file you want and it will install it to your Vita or PlayStation TV. Again, do not install 3.68 or any higher firmware because the cold boot exploit doesn't work on those higher firmwares, only on 3.65 and 3.67. And that is it for this homebrew update. Like I said, it's very short. The script is only a page and a half long. 
Yes, it is very short, but I do hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a comment below and please tell me how excited you are for the Vita again being exploited. And I'm sure a lot of the same people will be commenting from last week's video, but that's fine with me. I like the comments, I'll read every single one of them, and I'll try to reply to every single one of them as well. With that guys, I hope you do like this video, if you did, hit that like button as well, that subscribe button, and that little bell icon. You can also follow all my social media accounts, and all those links will be also in the description below. And guys, with that, I'll see you next video.